A title introduces this virtual ceremony, marking the 18th anniversary of the formal end of recovery operations at Ground Zero. 9-11 Memorial and Museum, May 30, 2002. 18th Anniversary Commemoration. Michael R. Bloomberg, Chairman, 9-11 Memorial and Museum, presents opening remarks remotely. The video continues with The Legacy of May 30, 2002. Still images show rescue and recovery workers at Ground Zero digging through the twisted steel, dust, and debris. Footage shows the last column at the recovery site. Rescue workers write memorial tributes on the tall steel column. A truck hauls the column away in its flatbed. An American flag and flowers drape over the steel. In a ceremony, recovery workers march away from Ground Zero. Next, Alice M. Greenwald, President and CEO, 9-11 Memorial and Museum, introduces footage of the May 30, 2019 dedication of the 9-11 Memorial Glade. People gather outdoors at the memorial. Uniformed officers carry flags in a procession, including bagpipe musicians. Footage and photos allow a glimpse of the Memorial Glade. Near the memorial pools, six rough-edged stone monoliths flank a stone pathway. World Trade Center steel fills narrow fissures carved into the granite monoliths. Nearby is the survivor tree, a low, branching, calorie pear tree with dark bark. As the Memorial Glade dedication ceremony begins, Gil Ramos, Port Authority police officer, sings the national anthem. Speakers include Michael Bloomberg, Alfonso David, former counsel to Governor Andrew Cuomo, Karen Pfeiffer, wife of firefighter Ray Pfeiffer, a high school choir sings, and footage shows people hugging and placing flowers on the stone monoliths. As a police officer plays taps on a bugle, footage shows the We Will Never Forget banner hanging on a building overlooking Ground Zero. The Memorial Glade's inscription is read by 9-11 Memorial community members contributing remotely. Next at the virtual ceremony, Alice M. Greenwald honors a new wave of first responders during the COVID-19 pandemic. A hand-drawn sign shows a stethoscope wrapped around a heart with the words, Thank you, grocery store workers, nurses, truck drivers. Dozens of 9-11 Memorial community and board members say thank you to essential workers by remote video. Evening footage shows New York City residents applauding essential workers from their homes and apartment buildings. John Stewart, board member, 9-11 Memorial Museum, calls for people to share their appreciation for essential workers in a hashtag Dear Hero campaign on social media. Hand-drawn signs appear. A child's drawing shows stick people around a blue and green planet Earth. Firefighters, police, and children hold hands together. We will always be there for you. Another homemade sign reads, Not all heroes wear capes. More footage from the dedication ceremony features Choir, Choir, Choir with Rufus Wainwright singing inside the September 11th Museum in Foundation Hall near the last column. At the conclusion of the virtual ceremony, text appears above a list of names. Thank you to all those who recorded messages. The 9-11 Memorial Museum is grateful to Spot Creative for producing this virtual ceremony. Additional credits follow. Good morning. 18 years ago today, May 30th, 2002, workers at the World Trade Center site officially completed the rescue, recovery, and relief operation that had stretched on for nine long months. During that time, people came from all around the country and the world to lend a helping hand, and together they helped our city and our country to rise again. But sadly, many grew ill from hazards and toxins at the site and thousands have died. Today, those who are suffering from respiratory illnesses and other health problems connected to the site are especially vulnerable to the coronavirus, and the virus has taken a heavy toll on them. A year ago in this day, we dedicated the 9-11 Memorial Glade to honor everyone who participated in the rescue and recovery effort, and to pay tribute to all the workers, the survivors, and people in the surrounding areas who've gotten sick or died. Today, as we mark the anniversary again, we remember the spirit of service and solidarity that so many people showed during the weeks and months after 9-11. Their example is especially inspiring and important right now. 
So today's a chance to honor and celebrate all the frontline workers, past and present, who are risking their own lives to help others. In the days and months that followed, Tuesday, September 11, 2001, thousands of people came to the World Trade Center site to take part in the rescue and recovery effort. They came from all over the region, from across the country and from around the world. Some had friends or family. Some had survived the attacks themselves. Others were volunteers drawn here by a sense of duty or out of the simple kindness of their hearts. For nine months, they worked tirelessly around the clock under conditions that were grim and dangerous. Some searched for survivors and then for remains to bring a measure of solace to grieving families. Others cleared the site. Others distributed food and clothes and care to the workers who had come to help. They showed the world what is possible when people work together with a common purpose. And like the heroes that we lost on 9-11, their selfless acts provided light that helped guide us through our darkest hours, and they allowed our city to rise again. May 30th, 2002 marked the official end of the rescue and recovery work at Ground Zero. For some, the end of the recovery was the beginning of an even more difficult journey of sickness and disease. Tragically, not all who labored so valiantly for their city and country in the aftermaths of the attack survived. In the years since 9-11, thousands of people have become ill or died from causes related to the attacks. That group includes many people who participated in rescue and recovery. It also includes people with homes and workplaces in the surrounding area who would not allow terrorists to force them to abandon their communities. It includes students at local schools, children and teenagers who were evacuated from classrooms during the attacks. It includes members of the FDNY, NYPD, the Port Authority and the Port Authority Police Department and the Departments of Sanitation and Design and Construction and all the city, state, and federal agencies who played a role in the recovery, along with all the iron workers and construction trades and companies who lent a hand. And it includes volunteers from every walk of life. Many helped lead the fight to make sure that the federal government would care for everyone whose health was affected because of the attacks, even as they fought for their own lives. They truly are heroes. I am Alice Greenwald, President and CEO of the 9-11 Memorial and Museum. Every year on May 30th, we come together to honor the tens of thousands of men and women who took part in the nine-month rescue, recovery, and relief efforts following the 9-11 attacks. With the dedication of the Memorial Glade in 2019, we were able to move our annual commemoration ceremony from Foundation Hall inside the museum, outside to the Glade. I invite you to join us as we recall meaningful moments from last year's dedication ceremony. Though we may be physically apart, I know our hearts are together. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight 
All the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Today, we are dedicating this memorial glade to all who became sick or died because of causes related to the attacks and to all the men and women who took part in the rescue and recovery effort that ended on this date 17 years ago. During rescue and recovery work, a central ramp allowed people in the work site, the memorial glade now occupies that same spot, I'm happy to say. And as you can see, the Memorial Glade includes a pathway through a tranquil clearing on the 9-11 Memorial Plaza. At one end of the pathway is the survivor tree, which was badly damaged during the 9-11 attacks. Recovery workers saved it and brought it to safety. It has since grown into a symbol of resilience and rebirth. Along the pathway, there are six granite monoliths thrusting upwards towards the sky. Cracks in the stone were bound with steel from the World Trade Center. The stones and steel are a reflection of the strength that we have drawn from those who helped heal our deepest wounds. We have a duty to care for those who need it and to honor the memory of those who died. The Memorial Glade helps us to fulfill that duty. And I hope it will also remind people of the power of service and inspire them to give back in their own ways. In honor of those we lost to illness related to 9-11, let us observe a moment of silence. After the towers came crashing down, Thousands of first responders, construction workers, and volunteers combed through the site despite the toxic fumes coming from the burning wreckage. These first responders did not think about themselves as Democrats or Republicans. They didn't see themselves as white or black or Hispanic or Asian. They saw themselves as Americans. And as Americans, they stood together they completed their work months sooner than expected. And today, we remember the day that they finished the job. May 30th, 2002, 17 years ago today. I came today to help dedicate the Memorial Glade in honor of my husband, firefighter Ray Pfeiffer. A man who used to say, do the right thing, even when no one is looking. My name is Karen Pfeiffer, and my husband lost all 12 members of his Manhattan firehouse on 9-11. For him, the guys were family, whether they had been in his firehouse or in another. Like so many of you here today, Ray spent the next nine months searching and digging at Ground Zero without being asked, without being told, and without thinking about the consequences. He was a first responder who dedicated his life to helping other first responders, fighting for health care, to safeguarding their families, to making sure making a lot of noise to make sure our country kept its promise to those who brought healing in the aftermath of 9-11.
We lost Ray two years ago from what began as kidney cancer, a result of his work down at the World Trade Center site. Ray loved being a firefighter more than he loved anything. And in a way, this glade reminds me of him. It's trees that offer shelter and reach for the sky, providing a place to sit and remember and be together. I thank you for giving us a place to remember them, a place that honors the work that they did, their courage and their strength. What a beautiful place for our heroes. And Ray, like you said, do the right thing even if no one is looking. And today, Ray, everyone is looking. At either end of the memorial glade are steel panels. Like guardian sentinels, they stand watch, and they mark the entrances into this sacred place of honor and remembrance. Each bears an identical inscription, which reads as follows. This memorial glade is dedicated to those whose actions in our time of need led to their injury, sickness, and death. Responders and recovery workers. Survivors and community members. Suffering long after September 11, 2001. From exposure to hazards and toxins that hung heavy in the air. Here and beyond this site known as Ground Zero. And at the Pentagon and near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. In the aftermath of the terrorist attacks. Here we honor the tens of thousands from across America and around the world who came to help and to heal, whose selflessness and resolve, perseverance and courage renewed the spirit of a grieving city, gave hope to the nation, and inspired the world. A core part of our mission at the 9-11 Memorial and Museum is to honor our community of first responders. In the days and weeks that followed the 9-11 attacks, volunteers would gather on the West Side Highway in Lower Manhattan, which came to be known as Hero Highway, to cheer the thousands of rescue and recovery workers making their way to Ground Zero. Today, thousands of men and women across the country are putting their own health at risk as they come to the aid of those in need during this COVID-19 pandemic. Today's challenges have brought forward a new wave of first responders, doctors, nurses, supermarket workers, warehouse personnel, truck drivers, transit workers, police officers, firefighters, sanitation workers, PPE manufacturers, food bank workers, and so many, many more. 
hero highways are now popping up across the country and around the world with every shift change at medical centers and hospitals. Each night in New York City at 7 p.m., residents who shelter in place can be heard clapping, singing, and cheering in support of those on the front lines. In that spirit, we have invited some of our friends, 9-11 community members and board members, to join us in saying thank you. Due to COVID-19, this is the first time we will not stand next to each other at Ground Zero on May 30th. And I just want you to know, I really miss you. May 30th is our day of gratitude. For me, May 30th is a day to honor the everyday heroes. I wanted to take this time to thank all those who came to help New York City in our time of need. I would like to thank all the first responders and civilians, recovery workers, and anyone who volunteered down on Ground Zero after 9-11. We salute all of those brave first responders. Their resilience is an inspiration to us all. They have given us the values that we need and strive for today. You were magnificent. You saved us. Thank you for your resilience and unwavering commitment. We remember, we pay tribute to, and we will never forget those efforts. I would like to take a moment to remember all who we lost on that horrific day. Today, we honor those lost, and we pray for their families. You will never be forgotten, and God bless America. Thank you. 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 May 30th has always been very special for me. It's the day I get to thank my husband for what he did on that day and thereafter. It's the day where I get to remember all the people I met as a recovery worker. It's the day where we get to say thank you for the sacrifices that were made. And it's the day that we get to tell the world we will not be forgotten. I was a respondent for September 11, 2001 for the terrorist attacks. I want to thank you all to all the members and the first responders that responded to the September 11, 2001 attacks and all who risked their lives to save everyone in that time of need. I am truly grateful and honored that I was able to work alongside so many brave first responders at Ground Zero. You know, it wasn't just recovery work, it was trying to keep us smiling. It was listening to us if we needed a shoulder to uh, lean on. While we lost many brothers and sisters at the time and in subsequent years, I have been grateful that our community has responded to create such a great remembrance for all. While the date of May 30th marks the end of recovery and cleanup operations, it also represents the beginning of a different challenge. I remember now with great love and understanding and great affection, all those who lost their lives since 9-11. My prayers go out to those who are still suffering from 9-11 related illnesses. I would like to thank all other responders who are currently suffering from 9-11 related illnesses for their sacrifice, and pray for their strength and recovery. I'd like to express my gratitude to the many 9-11 advocates that fought for the Victims' Compensation Fund bill to be passed. To our 9-11 heroes taken too soon because of the coronavirus, words fail to express my sorrow. On behalf of all your union brothers and sisters, I simply say, we will never forget. Thank you. 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 For your service. Woo! The enduring resilience and sacrifice of the 9-11 community remains an inspiration.
I am in awe of today's heroes who are on the front lines risking their lives battling this pandemic. I want to express my gratitude to our everyday heroes on the front lines and let the 9-11 community and to those who have been affected by the coronavirus know that we stand with you. To those suffering from 9-11 illnesses during this unprecedented time, just know that you're not alone and we see you. I want to express immeasurable gratitude. It is people like you that make our city and country great. You are the best of humanity. I am here today to thank you all for all you do. Thank you for your service. My condolences to the families that have lost someone to COVID-19. I just want to send my appreciation out to everybody who's either engaging in essential work or just staying home to keep us all safe. Stay safe and stay healthy. 9-11 has taught us that over time, we are capable of healing and we will come together once again to rebuild stronger than before. For the 9-11 community, we have survived 18 and a half years since that horrific Tuesday morning. And while we've lost so many good men and women, uniform and non-uniform, I'm imploring you all now, with this COVID-19 epidemic going around, to heed the advice of the experts, to stay inside, to social distance, and to wear a mask. Together, thanks to the sacrifice of all the first responders, the region will get through this. The progress made here at the World Trade Center in the last 18 years gives us hope for the future. May we come out of this time a more caring, an empathetic world. I'd like to acknowledge a new generation of first responders that are out on the battleground fighting this unseen enemy. God bless our nation's first responders. God bless America. To the healthcare workers and frontline workers and police and fire, we say thank you. 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 Hey everybody, it's John Stewart. Uh, once again, we're coming up on another uh, May 30th uh, where we commemorate that last piece of steel heading out uh, the end of the cleanup and uh, rescue and recovery efforts down at Ground Zero. And obviously we're not gonna be able to be together during that time, but this would be a great time to still remember uh, the heroes of that, that terrible day and the aftermath and, and the fight that they continue to have. So we would love it if you would send a message to them, kind of a, a dear hero message to show uh, your appreciation. And, you know, in this current pandemic, as we see, you know, these essential workers, these heroes, in times of great crisis, put themselves in harm's way. But I think it's important that we remember that they're heroes, but they're not superheroes. And, and maybe what's so spectacular about uh, their effort and their selflessness and their willingness to put themselves into this position is that they're not superheroes. They're, they're just, they're people with the same frailties, and uh, the same vulnerabilities that the rest of us have. They just choose, even with the knowledge of what the consequences may be for themselves, to do these essential and heroic uh, jobs. So it would be great if you could write your own Dear Hero uh, postcard or letter or picture and uh, share it on social media. Uh, you can tag a museum on Instagram or Facebook at 9-11 Memorial or Twitter at September 11 Memorial, or use hashtag uh, Dear Hero. Um, because they're heroes because they're people. And even knowing that, they continue to put themselves into the fight. And it's an incredible, incredible uh, act of courage and selflessness. And so thanks a lot. And hopefully next May 30th, we'll all be able to be together and commemorate this special occasion. Thanks.
Thank you for joining us to commemorate the 18th anniversary of the close of the recovery effort at the World Trade Center site and one year since the formal dedication of the Memorial Glade. Today and forever, we honor those whose exposure to toxins and hazards around the site led to their illness, injury, and death. To the men and women on the front lines, past and present, we sincerely thank you.